Hey guys, Troy here. This is a video that's long overdue. I've been a strong supporter of Curtis over at Lambertone's pickups for a long time now and have his pickups in nearly every guitar that I own. And one of the questions I get asked the most, this might be the most asked question I get is, what's better in the bridge for my guitar, a grinder or a crema? Uh, so is it a crema crema, crema neck, crema bridge, or a crema neck and a grinder bridge? What's the best setup? And this video is an attempt to just show the differences between the two. The answer is there's not a best setup. It just depends on what you want. And you have to know what the pickups do and how that's gonna pair with your setup to see if it's gonna meet your goals. Um, but this is a, an attempt to show the differences in a worship context using tones that are most used in a worship context. So lots of delay, ambient reverbs, big overdrive, stereo sound, um, that's what I exclusively play, so I'm most interested in that. Uh, so hopefully this video, if you're uh, one of those players that plays in church and uses those types of tones, this uh, hopefully would be helpful for you. Um, so let's talk about the guitars really quick. So I chose two guitars that are almost identical in terms of, ev I mean, really everything. So Alder Bodies, Rosewood Fretboards, Maple Necks. The only difference is the bridge pickup. So bridge pickup in this one is a grinder, bridge pickup in this one is a crema. Now, one thing I, uh, I guess a notable difference that I would suggest is um, the neck shape. So this is a direct copy of one of my other guitars. It's a bit fatter and this is a little bit thinner neck. It's not thin, but it's a little bit thinner. And to me, thinner necks produce a snappier tone with a little bit more treble. So just keep that in mind. I don't have two guitars that are exactly the same, so it's hard to do a comparison with two guitars that are exactly the same. But Now, <clears throat> sonically speaking, when you try to put it into words, what I think the difference is between the two pickups are this. So we'll start with the crema as the bass line. The crema is a low output, very clear, articulate pickup that allows the transient, so like when you hit a note, it's gonna snap. So it's gonna have that like immediate, like in your face type tone, but very clear, it's not like a loud, Thing. It's, it's loud, it's perceived as loud because it's very clear and very snappy. So it's the closest thing that I've found to putting a single coil in a guitar, but actually actually the pickup is a humbucking pickup. So that's my sonic uh, verbal um, description of the crema. The grinder now, uh, as opposed to the crema, is less open sounding because it's more compressed. So the crema is not compressed at all, whereas the grinder to me is a compressed sounding pickup, not crazy compressed, not like, you know, Les Paul PAF compressed, but it's compressed. So the transients aren't gonna stick out as much. So it's more mellow sounding. It has more output, so it's gonna drive your pedals more. And to me, it has more mids and low end. Um, very good pickup. Now in the past, I have not liked the grinder and I think I know why. It's because I was using stereo Kemper setup. And uh, if you know anything about the Kempers, when you run a pedal board into them, they're very compressed on their own. And that can be a good thing. It can really fill up a mix. It sounds really awesome. But the drawback is that they're really compressed. So if you hit it with a hot signal, everything starts to get like really jumbled up. And to me, it's like trying to put like a golf ball through a garden hose. You know, you have all this signal and all this tone and all this wet effects and stuff happening. You're trying to fit that through a really compressed uh, opening and it just makes it kind of sound messy and choked up, I guess. But fast forward to now when I'm using the Axe FX as my primary rig and the HX Stomp as my secondary rig, those are less compressed by a long shot in my opinion. So when I put the grinder in this guitar, I actually liked it a lot because I like that mellow sound too. I don't have that in a guitar really. I like that mellow sound. It's kind of rounded off. It's compressed. So I really do enjoy it and I plan on using it quite a bit more going forward. So uh, what I did is I played through Spirit and Truth's version of Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. So that's the group that I'm involved in. <clears throat> We're redoing a lot of hymns and uh, very theologically sound songs, but putting like big instrumentation to them. So I played through that with both guitars. I'm just going to swat, you know, kind of flip back and forth and show you the differences and hopefully it's helpful. And then at the very end of the video, <clears throat> excuse me, very end of the video, I put um, like just just tinkering around, I guess, with uh, no music in mind, just showing like the dynamics of the pickups and things like that. So it can uh, help you understand like, you know, how dynamically when you play, how do your dynamics affect the pickup and the tone that you're going to get. And then uh, last thing I want to talk about, guys, is as always, is just really it's kind of born from the shirt here. Um, the shirt 
is based on John 3.30, very popular Bible verse, and one that I think as um, people who are serving on Sundays, we need to really, really keep in mind. And it's because John the Baptizer, what he says here is that I must decrease so Christ would increase. And that's why the shirt says Christ up and me down. So Christ increase, me decrease. And it's because all this gear, like all the pedals, the guitars, like the worship culture in general, if we're not careful, like it breeds pride and it breeds egotism and it breeds this like, I'm up on stage, I'm having fun, look at me. Um, It almost can be like a rock show in a sense. And we can have this feeling of superiority. We can have this feeling that uh, we're not doing it for Jesus as much as we like to say that we are. We are doing it for ourselves and our own selfish gain. <clears throat> and I think we have to guard against that. We have to be on guard all the time against that to make sure that we're not breeding pride. You know, um, Augustine said that pride is the sin that's pregnant with all others. So it starts with pride. And as we know, that's what happened to Satan. So just have to be careful. And I'm just exhorting you and encouraging you and just hopefully warning you against that. That you're, as a Christian, if you're a true believer serving on Sundays, your goal is to decrease. So although you pursue tone and you reach for the best tone that you can, you want to play the best you can, have the best guitar that you can, best tone that you can, the idea is eventually you would totally forget about that stuff and just worship your risen Savior. That that would not even be a focus anymore. You want to get this stuff so locked in that it's not even a thought. You're focusing on Jesus. That's the end goal. So that you would decrease and that Jesus Christ would increase. So that sin, pride, sin would become bitter so Christ would become sweet. And that's my encouragement to you. Hopefully that pushes you a little bit, uh, maybe confirms your feelings a little bit, um, that you need to guard against that. And if you're one who's falling into that trap, because it really can be a trap, if you're one who's falling into that trap, that you take this time now to repent, ask for forgiveness, and ask for new desires, desires that would be only for Jesus and not about your own selfish gain or your own feelings about worshiping on Sunday. Take just a long, hard look at your church and figure out what it is they're going for. They go in for the fame of man or the fame and glory of God and his son and his spirit. Is that what they're going for? So the glory of the Trinity at the expense of the glory of man, right? We don't want to be glorified. We want our Savior to be glorified, people to look at it at him and not us. So hope the video is helpful for you. If you made it through uh, this far, I very much appreciate it and hope that's uh, encouraging for you. So I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.
Thank you. 